Controllers suck. I mean, look at this. What even are these alien shapes we're expected to play video games with? Now, despite all of these less than optimal controllers, I believe there's still one perfect controller. The Wii Guitar. The Wii Guitar is super cool. It's a guitar, it's... Huh. The Wii Guitar was only really made to be used with Guitar Hero and Rock Band games on the Wii. You know, I'm starting to understand the name now. Because of that, there's no plugin or anything to get guitar input sync at all. I mean, I think guitar input should just be a built-in thing in all game engines, but apparently it's not. Now, it actually wasn't that hard to get the guitar inputs, the hardest part was just this thing which I decided to call the Dingle. The reason it was so hard to get inputs for was because for some reason, when you leave it idle, it just goes back to the middle instead of staying where it is, maybe? I can use this app called X Output to get the guitar inputs and turn those into regular Xbox controller inputs, but I don't want you to need another app just to be able to play this game. I originally worked on a sort of game compilation. I was gonna do a few games that use the guitar as an input, I already had a platformer and this sort of avoider game made, and I even made a cool menu system before deciding it was bad and garbage and throwing it out of my window into the garbage truck which took it to the video game equivalent of that one Toy Story scene only they don't make it out of the incinerator. And I'm also not gonna spend like half a year on this one like some other video. So I decided to shrink the scope a bit and just focus on one idea. Basically, I wanted to make something like Pulsario by Fred Wood, but you use the dingle to rotate the player. I started off by making the player controller, which is just a rigid body that gets propelled in whichever direction it's facing, and by creating a 1-bit rocket sprite. I didn't want to keep testing the game with a guitar, so I made it so there's also mouse controls, which I kind of prefer way more. I mean, the guitar is the perfect controller, you can't do this with a mouse. But I mean, it's okay I guess. Then made some stars for the background with some particles. I made some tiles and completely blanked on how to do an auto tile, so I had to manually place each of the right tiles in the right place, which I completely forgot how much I hate doing from designing levels in Pico 8. Game development is all about being lazy. I also made a couple of decoration tiles like some crates, dither patterns, a table, and dog. With all of these, I was able to make the first and the second level before trying out a bit of music composition. I sent this off to Jerushi, and they said something like, it's good, but also kinda not, and gave me some tips to make it better. I wanted to have some more moving parts, so I made this friendly little saw blade that moves from target to target with some code that I think is pretty cool. It gets the position of each target on run, and then it uses a tween to move between them at whatever speed I put in the editor. I use that in the next three levels. The levels actually took a lot more than a short time lapse to make because I tried to put a lot of decorations all over the map to make it feel more alive. Then I might have gone and made another song. What even are some of these samples? You know what's epic? Death. That's why I added a death counter in the corner with a custom font I made. Then I made the next obstacle which is inspired by one of these. I'm again kind of proud of this because I don't have to manually space everything out, it does some random nerd stuff to figure out how far to space each arm out and rotate them. And just like a real fidget spinner, it can and will cause pain if you hit the side while it spins. The spinners were used for the last two levels. You think the game is done now, I have all the levels made, but it's only just started. I decided to add an online leaderboard. I give it the same particles used for the rest of the game, but a bit more dense as the background, and I made a screen that I think looks pretty okay. I stole my username input screen directly from my C-Gem game, and I just set it up, and... There's two leaderboards now. How did this happen? Menus are important. I made a title screen with some buttons to transition to the leaderboard, and a settings menu for things like full screen, audio, toggling guitar controls. Hey! Remember when this was about making a game for a guitar? Those were good times. And yeah, the game still works with the guitar if you really want to play it like that. The story for the game goes like this. 
You and your crew of rockets were piloting your ship when an asteroid came and broke a hole in your ship, sucking you and all of your crew into the vacuum no! of space. No! I decided to show this to you through cutscenes rather than what some of my really old games do, where you might do something and then text would just show up and tell you what's happening, cause you know I can't read. I thought I was done at this point, but then someone gave me the idea for a level editor. I started off the level editor by actually getting an auto tile to work, which is super helpful because it means map creators don't have to waste their time placing every single tile, like I did. I literally just had this set to the wrong mode before. I made a grey box that super poorly follows your mouse cursor around and made it so you can left click and right click to add or remove blocks, as well as made the middle mouse button move the camera. I wanted to try and make this editor just as good as actually making maps in the engine, but without overcomplicating it too much, so I tried to keep all the buttons fairly simple. The draw one is for drawing tiles, which I later changed to this icon. The rocket button, which I later changed to the rocket, moves, you guessed it, the dog. No, yeah, the rocket. And the big rocket one, which is for the big rocket. Then I added the two more complicated things, saw blades and fidget spinners. I created a sort of system where you pick what you want to spawn on the bottom bar, then you can use the plus button to spawn one in the middle of your screen and drag its targets around. Then, once it's selected, you can mess with its variables like arm length, speed, or even just delete it with the minus button. The last part of the editor itself were these buttons to change the song and the save and quit buttons. <laughs> Behind the scenes, I had to do some extra fancy stuff to save your whole level into a .rocket bit file, which you can share with others through my Discord server. Obviously, a level editor is no good without some way to play the level, so I made a scene that lets you load in your rocket bit files and some menus for selecting the levels. This DLC tab is where I'll put levels that I think are cool from the Discord server, so if you share any levels there, they may be featured there. This brings me to the final point. I'm thinking of having some sort of Rocket Bits level contest in the Discord. No clue exactly what'll happen, but if it sounds interesting to you, then join the server and poke around in the editor a bit. That's all for me. Like, subscribe, spam my email, and bye!